welcome everyone to Exchange for Media show. We have today with us Mr. Shashank Srivastava, Senior Executive Director, Marketing and Sales, Maruti Suzuki. Maruti is India's largest car maker, which is headed towards producing a record number of cars this year, despite inflation and downturn in the GDP growth. Good news for the auto sector and perhaps for the ad industry as well. Welcome to the show, Mr. Srivastava. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Shwasa Maruti is likely to record 25% growth in the current fiscal, um, and I suppose 20 lakh, 20, 20 lakh units are likely to be produced this year compared to 16.7 lakh in the last fiscal. So um, it's really interesting to know which segment or category is witnessing the highest growth and why. Yeah, so uh, Maruti has always been strong in the smaller car segment. Uh, you know, last year our market share in the non-SUV space uh, was about 66%, which is the highest that uh, we have had for the last 20 years. Uh, uh, but um, uh, SUV segment is something which we are looking at very closely because our market share in SUV segment is not so great. Uh, we have two products there, the Brezza and the S-Cross, uh, against about 47 in the industry. So uh, we need to strengthen that portfolio. So we are looking forward to strengthening that portfolio and we are expecting uh, good numbers to come from this segment. That segment has been growing very fast. As you know, it was just about 26% two years back. It's climbed 40% uh, 21, 22. And this trajectory continues in these two months that we are seeing in the current financial year as well. Uh, so auto industry is facing a shortage of semiconductor uh, chips for, for, for a long time. Uh, so uh, how, how do you manage your, you know, your, to secure your supplies? Yes, yeah, so uh, uh, it is actually, uh, we have a very good portfolio of vehicles, 15 uh, in the, the largest in the industry. Uh, we have been uh, making adjustment in our production plan model wise, because different models require different levels of chips and different types of chips, uh, the semiconductor chips. So we have been doing that in quite successfully. So we have had, uh, uh, we have tried to maximize the production with the availability. We are of course talking to our vendors, our suppliers of semiconductor components and uh, trying to, th to, to improve things. In fact, last September, we could do only 40% of our planned production, but we are now at the level of about 93, 95%, which is pretty good. Still not 100% normal. And I expect it to continue for some more time before it becomes 100% normal. The exact timeline, I'm not able to tell you because it's a very complex global supply chain which is involved. And it's difficult to give an exact timeline. You don't have the visibility of uh, semiconductor capacity availability in the, global, uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the global supply chain. And that's the reason why I'm a little apprehensive to give an exact timeline when it will become 100% normal. Mr. Shrasa, when we are talking, uh, you know, at, at present, in inflation and you know fuel price in the country both are at their peak and investors are you know uh, they are tightening their purse strings many brands are planning to hold uh, their ad spends to cut losses what would be your addicts uh, be like in in, in, in uh, financial 2023 considering the high growth in sales yeah so if you look at the auto uh, expenditure on on uh, in, in, in on advertising I think it's going to increase this year. I, I would put it in the range of about 15 to 20%. Uh, last year, um, auto was almost, I think, uh, 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 5,000 uh, 5, crore uh, of the total 57,000 crore expenditure that you saw in the industry. I'm talking of, uh, I'm keeping the digital side aside. It's only the, the main, uh, uh, the, the, the traditional, traditional media, media. media platforms that I'm talking of. Uh, so half of it was from uh, car manufacturers. Um, so it would be in the range of about, uh, maybe about 2,000 uh, crores or 2,500 crores types. So I expect a 10, 15%, uh, 15 to 20% growth actually. And the reason why I say this is in the automobile, the advertising expenditure that OEMs do is largely on four factors. One is uh, uh, sustenance of the current brands. Sustenance is important because uh, you need to um, continue to generate the demand for existing um, uh, models. Second, you have uh, a, a new model launches where you need a brand positioning, which also entails a lot of expenditure on ads. Third is on the local level, which you need to convert all those inquiries and hyperlocal as well as thing into actual sales. And that happens largely through print medium, uh, but it is nevertheless a large portion that would continue. And fourth, uh, I think on the digital front, you would have seen that there is a, a greater attraction for personalized advertising that's 
possible on the digital platform and that would also increase so i think all those factors i don't see a factor where there would be a reduction in ad expenses at uh, okay. this thing only a really deep uh, cut in demand can probably uh, you know spur, spur oems not to spend but i don't see that happening this year mm-hmm. and what about your own ad ad, ad expenditure maruti's ad expenditure this year are you going to increase yeah. it so yes of course uh, uh, we are uh, uh, 50% of the market almost so yes we will be increasing and we have planned that way because our, we have several new launches so that launch expenditure which i was referring to will have uh, this will be new brands the sustenance uh, of course continues we have 15 models uh, so that sustenance will be required and anyway our expenditure on the digital platform has been increasing it's almost now 30% of our overall ad ex, ad ex. so uh, on all counts uh, based on these factors we have actually kept a higher budget for advertising expenditure this year than what mm-hmm. we have done last year okay okay can you please uh, give you know tell me uh, the percentage wise how high it is compared to the last year so roughly i would say uh, roughly uh, almost like um, 30% or so up roughly mm-hmm. okay okay that's really a good number mm. so i would also like to know uh, the factors behind the sustained growth of the public sector company uh, maruti you know at the time when uh, companies like ford i mean they are selling their plants you know due to mounting losses uh, so uh, maruti is not a public uh, sector company anymore as you know uh, we were a public sector company till 2002 Uh, for the last 20 years we are a public limited company um, because government exited from uh, from 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 maruti suzuki and i'm sorry uh, yeah. yeah yeah so it was uh, listed uh, in 2002 uh, but uh, of course uh, we started off as a public uh, sector company and uh, we, we one of the reasons why we have continued to lead the market obviously is because we are a very customer centric organization and all our choices whether it is about product portfolio about the processes that we establish the dealerships that we have the network that we go into all that is basically centered on the consumer so we take consumer satisfaction very very seriously we measure consumer satisfaction almost at every process point whether it is customer uh, at the pre sale stage or during the sale stage or post sale stage whether it is insurance or finance or whatever we measure uh, we are sort of uh, um, what do you call uh, very very concerned if there is a, a drop uh, in in our customer satisfaction scores i think that is one of the reasons why we have uh, continued to dominate the auto industry in india mm-hmm. uh, the us government has recently introduced a bill in their parliament i guess uh, which which aims to curb the monopoly of google and facebook uh, so i would like to know from you as a marketer how fair uh, their ad selling is in india yeah so i think uh, you know, there is a direct uh, 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 interaction of of these companies with uh, the advertisers also so um, i i i think they fairly for us i have not noticed anything uh, really negative about that because uh, one good thing about digital is that you can measure exactly the measurability makes the process quite robust but of course there are many areas where you can have uh, you know in- improvements and going forward i think the amount of data that they have uh, is of course makes them a very strong uh, parties and platforms to deal with especially if you are going forward if you have a cookie less world and if the third party uh, you know the third party data goes missing then advertisers uh, as well as the broadcasters would have to depend on uh, such data as uh, is collected by large uh, uh, organizations large platforms especially social media platforms what we call walled gardens and that i think would become essential part of a strategy of advertising on the digital platform for mm-hmm. any large advertiser like maruti suzuki the us will also talks about uh, how google uh, is actually the seller and the buyer and also running the exchanges and maybe going forward if the law is pa- law is passed uh, bill is passed so they will have to choose just one segment they, they can be just one either exchange or buyer or seller so uh, do you think that government of india should also bring such kind of legislation yeah, so actually uh, go, uh, across the world uh, these uh, legislation regarding digital platforms and social media platforms have 
uh, been changing and developing because people really it's it's a new field fast changing fields and therefore legislation has not kept pace with the changes uh, essentially legislation process itself is a slow process generally speaking uh, across the world so yes you are you are right as we see a lot of changes in the um, in the way business is conducted uh, in the digital platform, you would see, and there is a requirement for legislation uh, to be closely looked at in this sector. Uh, the uh, response time, of course, has to be much more agile than what we have seen uh, across the world in this regard. Uh, since you have very, very, uh, you know, small time, uh, so I, this is my last question. Uh, so, uh, other car, make, car makers have they have already launched their, you know, electric vehicle model uh, in an effort to reduce their carbon footprint. Uh, what is stopping Maruti to make EV? Uh, actually, um, uh, one point which I must tell you is that EV sales last year were just 20,000 in the industry uh, of 30.7 lakhs. So that was about like less than 0.4%. And the reason why the large scale adoption of EV hasn't happened is because the cost of acquisition of EV vehicles is very high because uh, EV vehicle making uh, has about 55% of the cost is battery cost. And current battery technology does not enable a lower cost of acquisition. So that's one big hindrance for the adoption of EV in the country. And second, of course, is the charging infrastructure. Charging infrastructure in our country is not so developed. So it's possible that consumers who have a, their own garage or uh, you know a special place where they can charge every night at home, they may be less uh, uh, compared to in other countries. So uh, that is one big uh, uh, issue. Uh, leading to what we call uh, the uh, range anxiety in customers. They are anxious whether they'll be able to complete the journey on a single charge. So on those two factors is the reason why the adoption of EV hasn't been very large. Um, so it's not really about uh, technology because technology is available, but it's about these two factors of acquisition and also customer convenience. I know the optics look a little uh, uh, bad, but you know, if, if the choice is between optics and customer convenience, I, I can tell you Marty Suzuki will choose customer convenience 100 out of 100 times because we are customer centric organization. But of course there are manufacturers who will showcase it as a technology, not necessarily for, uh, for uh, environment because they continue to sell large diesel cars. So it's not really good for the environment. So it's not necessarily the environment or showcasing, but we are really looking at uh, something which can make a big difference to the environment and customer convenience. And that is why we, you would have seen that we have not immediately launched EV, but we are in the process of uh, EV development and we should, uh, by our estimates by 2025 or before, we should be able to launch uh, the EV vehicle also. This is, this is a very good news. Thank you, Mr. Shivasa, for talking with us and taking time out. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.